a little bit different bike than I usually review on the channel. Today, I'm gonna take a look at the Breezer Thunder, a trail-worthy bike with all the mounts. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. So a quick note, if you guys enjoy these bike reviews, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or stopping by the merch store. We, we still have some bandanas, a ton of stickers and patches. It quite literally keeps the lights on here. And if you guys want a different perspective on the Breezer Thunder, definitely check out our friend Eric's channel at Spindat. He's definitely far more mountain bikey than I am, and his content is always super entertaining. Okay, so let's get into it. The Thunder is a fully rigid, all steel mountain bike, steel frame, steel fork, 4130 chromoly. This particular build is built around 29er wheels and tires, which are both tubeless compatible out of the box. The tires are the Goodyear Newton MTRs, which are a pretty aggressive tire. The whole time I was riding this bike, there was definitely no lack of grip. The brakes are hydraulic Shimano MT500s. And looking at the fork, it's got a ton of mounts. It's got three pack mounts. You could potentially run a rack. There's a fork down by uh, the axle. And it's got pretty good clearance. The tires are 2.4 inches and it's got a lot of room to spare. Moving on to the cockpit, it's got uh, a pretty standard flat bar. There's a slight bit of sweep, not a whole lot, basically a flat bar. Some WTB rubber grips and the shifter is Shimano Dior. Moving on to the frame, it's got mounts for a top two bag. And on this size, this is the size 17. You've got three pack mounts here on the down tube as well as bottle mounts on the bottom of the down tube. The drivetrain is a one by with a 32 tooth front chain ring. On the rear, we've got a 12 speed cassette going from 11 to 51. And the rear derailleur is Shimano Dior. Bike also ships with a KS dropper post that's actuated at the handlebar and it's finished off with a WTB saddle. And there's some interesting frame things at the rear of the bike as well. There are eyelets and mounts so you can run a rear rack. And interestingly, it has a set of three pack mounts right here. Uh, on the drive side of the bike, but it doesn't have it on the non-drive side. So I don't know if that's a thing. Found it a little odd that you'd have mounts on one side of the bike, but not on the other side. The bike is boost spacing and it's also suspension corrected and will take a fork with up to a hundred mil of travel. And the entire bike retails for just under $1,500. So I know you're tired of the specs. How's it ride and why, why am I testing this bike out in particular? Looking at the geometry, it's got a fairly slack end at 67 degrees with these tires and the head tube angle. The calculated trail was definitely on the high side at 104. With this handlebar setup, it puts your hands a little bit ahead of the steering axis. So to me, it has that real swoopy kind of high trail feeling um, that's more common with modern bikes. The rear of the bike is actually fairly long at 450. And combining that with the slacker front end, uh, I feel like it was actually a fairly balanced bike. Going uphill for me, the bike did have a tendency uh, to wander at slow speeds. I think that's just a, a function of the high trail and the hand placement. I found the bike really planted. Sitting and climbing on steep terrain, it wasn't a real battle to keep the front wheel from popping up. I feel like that's definitely an advantage of being slung in between the wheels with that longer geometry. Going downhill, that feeling of being planted and centered on the bike stayed the same. Pretty easy to keep on the green and blue trails that I took it on. Again, I'm not the raddiest mountain biker. I'm kind of an all wheels on the ground mountain biker. So I'm looking for something that feels stable, secure, a geometry where I don't feel like I'm gonna go over the handlebars. And I think this bike really delivers on that. But it's not all sunshine and roses. Let's go into the pros and cons. The first big pro is the handling. I feel like if you're a noob like me and you want something that feels planted and stable, then this bike definitely delivers. Another big pro is the utility. It's got all the mounts, three pack mounts in the front. You can put a rear rack on the back and this weird asymmetrical uh, mount setup going on back there. I also think it's decently spec for the money. You get a pretty wide and low range. The shifting was super crisp. I had no problems with the brakes and it's nice that the wheel set and the tires are tubeless compatible. So what about the cons? Uh, for me, a lot of the cons center around in the front area and that's primarily the fork. Like I didn't weigh the fork separately, but assembling it, it was really, really heavy. The, the total weight of the bike with just some cheap composite pedals tips the scales over 35 pounds, which I think that's a little bit of a chonker for a size 17. I think that the weight kind of detracted the joy for me, uh, especially when going uphill. 
I get it, weight shouldn't be everything, and it actually climbed fairly well, uh, given how heavy it was. But for a bike that's designed to carry even more weight, it's nice to have a little less base weight to start with. Do you know what I mean? To put this in perspective, this bike actually weighs more than like a Jones SWB and that has plus size tires. So I can totally see where people have purchased this bike and swapped out the fork for either suspension or something carbon. So if you are going to be dragging around uh, some weight, you at least get more squish. However, for me, that takes away a bit of the value proposition of this bike. I will say, however, it's spec'd out of the box with some decently low gears. So that does help mitigate the weight issue a little bit. Another con is that I just kind of found the front end fairly stiff. It didn't feel like there was a lot of flex in the handlebars. The rubber grips, while grippy, didn't offer much suspension. And the fork also felt a little dead. Whatever suspension I was getting was from playing with tire pressure. So overall, this bike was pretty fun on descents for kind of the green and blue trails I ride. It does give you a taste of a little bit more kind of progressive mountain bike geometry without spending a ton of money, but it does come at a cost and that is primarily weight. I think if you're looking for the essence of a fully rigid 90s mountain bike, but with progressive geometry and hydraulic disc brakes, then this might be a bike to consider. I think it could definitely work as a bike packing bike. It certainly has all the mounts, but if it were me, I'd probably look for um, you know, a carbon fork or, or some other rigid fork that didn't weigh as much as the stock one. I feel like it's in kind of a tough spot because in that $1,500 range, you've got bikes like the Timberjack or other bikes with front suspension. So for me, it's a little bit of a hard sell uh, for a fully rigid bike that, that's on the stiff side and that's on the heavy side to cost that much when if you spend a little bit more or at that price range, you've got options for a hardtail with front suspension. So the next question is, how does it work as a ATB? Again, I'm still kind of feeling out this concept, uh, but for me, the geometry feels a little bit more trail oriented. So if you're riding mostly trails, like it's actually designed for, then it works great for that. But in terms of using it as kind of a multi-purpose bike on roads or dirt roads, it's a little too burly, a little bit too much tire. I do feel like the front end geometry is a little too high trail. So you get that kind of pushing a shopping cart feeling on a dirt road. So for me personally, no. Again, it's got good bones. I appreciate all the mounts. I appreciate the component spec for the price. I think if you're looking for a modern-ish, uh, fully rigid bike, then this is definitely a great option. But yeah, that's what I think. But in terms of kind of filling this uh, amorphous category of ATB, I don't know if it's that, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm planning on reviewing more bikes that fall under this fully rigid mountain bike slash ATB category. Uh, let me know what bikes you guys want me to check out. Again, if you like this content, consider supporting the channel, join us on Patreon, buy some stickers and some merch, and as always, keep the supple side down.